welcome to OCD Hi-Fi Guy. And uh, what I am going to do right now is go through a quick explanation of crossover, how it works, and how you can set your Behringer piece, your DCX2496. Uh, and um, it's really, it does a ton more stuff than you really need. Uh, and so I'm going to cut to the chase and show you how to just do the the setup for hi-fi that really, you know, you don't need to mess with, with half the stuff in here. We've got bass woofers here. We've got a mid-range and we've got a tweeter, okay? So you know how they say we can hear from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. We'll use that as an example, 20 to 20K, okay? Each one of these sections, okay, these woofers, this mid-range and this tweeter, all does a different section of that frequency. Let's say the frequency goes, so you know, an arch. Well, these two go up about this far, and then it ha they hand off the job to this guy, and then he goes like to there, and then the tweeter takes it all the way up to 20,000 hertz. These, of course, is the low frequencies, then the middle frequencies, then the very high frequency cymbals and stuff like that. You know, bass and drums and things come in between here. Vocal is out of the mid. Uh, and so you, inside any speaker, you've got inside in the floor there at the back, something like that, you've got a, a filter network, which is a, it's a crossover and it's a passive because you're sending it, um, you're sending it all the energy and all the frequency, and then it's going to bleed off some to heat and, and, and it's going to put some over here and it's going to put the rest is going to go over to here. And then the, what's left is going to go to there, that kind of thing. So it's a little bit lossy. You lose, um, energy, you know, in that process. Um, and it also has some, you know, anomalies with it, depending on how, how tight. See, if, if you, if you think of each of these as an arch, okay, of, of frequency, right where they cross, right where this arch crosses, they're either going to go at a really steep thing to cut it off. Like when this goes down, it's going to be stopped from going too deep. Same with the tweeter. So either that's going to be stopped at a gradual arch or it's going to be stopped really at a hard, you know, or one that's, you know, really like a cliff. And then, and, and that's a, that's a, a, that's a higher order. They call it crossover or a slope. That's the slope. Um, so the slope can be 24 decibels per octave. It can be 12 decibels per octave. It can be six decibels per octave. Um, and of course, you know, they're different. They, they, they are gradual all the way to very steep. Okay. And so you need to know your speaker or you experiment to determine what slope you're going to use and at what point you're going to use, you know, uh, tweet, these would maybe go up to eh, maybe, you know, 400 Hertz or something like that. And then they would slope off and then this would pick up at 400 and then maybe it would take this up to, you know, 3k, 3,500, something like that, maybe 5k anywhere from 2 to 5K, um, and then slope it off, and then the tweeter would come up, too, at that point. Um, and so the, the very important job of the crossover is to divvy up the frequency and divide the frequency and put it to the right speakers, okay, or the drivers, the speaker drivers. Um, you're going to have one amplifier, basically, with the passive. The idea is you got one amplifier pushing, one channel is pushing this, and then it's just, it's just, um, you know, dividing it off into wherever it's going. Now, with a electronic crossover, like I'm showing you in a second, you're, you're, you're crossing it over before the speaker. You're crossing it over actually before the amplifier. So that way it sends, let's say this arch of signal, you know, this frequency band is going to go just to the Jeff Rowland left channel. Okay. This frequency band up here, that arch is going to go just to the Jeff Rowland right channel. And then this tweeter is going to be just the AGD right here. So this AGD is only going to be fed the exact frequency that it needs to cover this area. Under normal circumstances, this thing would be fed everything, but it would it would and it would give all the frequency to the speaker, but then it would bleed it off to heat, you know? I mean it's it's wasted energy is what it is. Um and and because you're not using the lows up here, but this thing still receives all the lows from the signal, and then it would, and then it would um, push the whole thing into the speaker, and then the speaker would would um, filter it off and, and and bleed it off, like I'm saying. So, um, but that's not necessary because you don't need 
this thing doesn't need the full frequency spectrum. It's only powering the tweeter. It only needs the very top frequencies, you know? So you want to cross over the signal before the amplifier, and then each amplifier is much more exact at its job. There's no wasted energy being bled off to heat. It's just only doing the frequency that it needs to do. The Roland is getting that frequency for the bass. The other uh, channel the Roland is getting the mid frequency, and, and it's much more efficient, way more efficient. Okay, it's also not plagued with phase issues and all the other stuff that the passives uh, crossovers get, get plagued with. So it's a, it's a, it's a much more pure uh, or audiophile way to go is to use an electronic crossover and, and actively cross over the, 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 the amplifiers before. Now, um, uh, another thing that I may note, in order to do that with something like this, you need to know the parameters of, of, of what the crossover is inside. And, and actually, really, you need to not have a crossover hooked up. So it would be hard, in other words, to make it work with the speaker and to make us be able to use an active crossover, I'd have to go inside there and, and disengage the um, the crossover that's in there, and then I'd have to have three binding posts at least, uh, three pairs, one for the low, one for the mid, and one for the high. So there would be three sets of posts on back, and I would have three amps, which I do back there, and they would each power one of those posts, okay? And what controls that is this thing right here, which is the, the, um, the active crossover. And uh, this is uh, a Behringer piece. This is pretty cool because it's super cheap. It's like 150 bucks at Guitar Center. And um, it will allow you to do, I use this to, to pick my points on the fly um, because you can do this while you're playing music. You can change the slope and all this stuff and listen to it change. And then you can, you can get your speakers dialed in using this and then I can go solder up my frequency boards for my analog crossover because normally I'm not gonna have a digital piece in my gear in, or in my in my chain whereby it's analog and I convert to digital just in order to do the crossover and then I convert it back to analog that's an unnecessary step I'd rather just keep it all analog and so um, but this is way handier because you can you can you can just change the you know I have to solder up a board every time I want to change the frequency or the slope on my analog crossover so this is uh, about getting the right points, and then I come back and, and, and solder up. Okay, so let's get to the more specific things. Okay, so the first thing you do when you get this thing is you have to, you have to set it up. So you press the setup button, which is over here. Let's see if I got that in there. Uh, over here, okay. Right here, the setup button. You're going to press that. And then the first thing it's going to do is it's going to ask us for the configuration. Okay, so what kind of configuration do we want? It's the outputs. Okay, so if you look over here, it's a, it's a three-way crossover. Okay, that means there's low, mid, and high. So we've got low, mid, high, low, mid, high. But you can arrange it anyways. You can go low, low, mid, mid, high, high, low, mid, high, low, mid, high. Um, you know, in many, just a bunch of different ways you can do it. I just do it which way my mind works best is, um, for me, it's low, Mid high left side, low mid high right side. That's how my brain works best. So that's how I, I configure it. But you can configure it anyway for that, you know, whatever works best for your mind. Um, and uh, let me see if I can get a little closer here. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so you can see the output configuration is just like I said low, medium, high, low, medium, high on the left and then on the right. And then it says the output stereo link is on. Okay, that means I've got whatever I change on number one is going to change on number four. So whatever I change on low left, it will automatically change on low right. Like any parameter that I change, crossover, tweak that I make, uh, adjustment, it will happen in unison. Anything I do on two will happen on five because that's uh, left mid and that's right mid. And then anything I do on three, I'll do, it'll happen on six. So you, you do want to link that. You want to turn that on the stereo link, the output stereo link. Now the input stereo link is, is, is also a link that links the inputs, which are right here, A and B. So that means anything you do to the B, it happens to the A and so forth. If you don't do that, then you can do some funky stuff where you can tune the left different than the right. That's for if they're doing crap at like big outdoor concerts or whatever. They'd never use a piece this cheap, but it still has the function of being able to do that uh, that fun that 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 particular function. So you'd have um, so I keep them together. Stereo link, 
both of those in as, as well. So the inputs and the outputs are both stereo linked, and then they're at the, at, the pro, at the configuration that I like, but you can do whichever one you like. So um, then we will go to our next page. This is delay correction. Okay, this is for this lets you allows you to correct for air freaking temperature, you know, because it, when it's hot out, you know, there's different propagation of sound waves than when it's cold out. And so um, this allows you to, this is again, concert shit. Um, and, and we don't need to worry about that. Um, so we're just going to skip that um, and go to this copy mode. Okay, so this is another thing um, that is uh, something that I'm not going to mess with. I don't even know what the hell it is. It's for something else. Page lock. I don't need to lock this up. Global lock. I don't need to lock the machine. No one's going to be coming messing with it. This is the contrast on the, the, the um, display and so forth. Do I want to mute the outs when, when power on? Um, no. So that would automatically, if I turn that on, that means when I flip this thing on, it would automatically mute all the outputs. Um, and that can be, you know, that can be good just to make sure if you're, again, it's like if you've got a big show going, you don't want all this stuff bl blaring out on the, on the big PAs. So we're going to go past this. And now we're back at the, at the, at the, at the front page of the setup. So now we're, we're, we can, we can leave that. Okay. So I'm going to go over to here. Oh, let me get up a little bit. Uh, okay. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click out of the setup. Okay. And now it's going to look like, like this right here. And this is the, this is the routing. Again, it shows the A side is one, two, and three, low, medium, and high. The B side is four, five, and six, low, medium, and high. Okay. And they're summed. It shows that they're summed. That means that all of them, when I, when I change one thing, it's going to change all, all of those. Okay, so now I want to go through, um, actually, okay, so this is what I have to do. The next is, depending on what I want to mess with, okay? So let's say I want to, I want to mess with the inputs first. Okay, this is the controls of when the signal comes into this piece, you have the front end, okay, or the input, and you can, you can change parameters. You can do gain up here. You can, you can boost and cut. You can add things and subtract things, and you can monkey with it on the front end, and then over down here where they have the you know the, the all those long uh, the six outputs, you can that's the output. So you can monkey with things on the output. Um, for now, we'll look at the input, um, and so we're going to click here, and it's going to show us. Look, okay, so I just clicked. It's going to show us that that's the input A, and it's going to the lines are going to go right to it, low, medium, and high. That's the, the co corresponding output configuration. Uh, and, and we can see right off the bat, I have it cut by 0.5 dB. So that means if we go to B here, it's going to also be cut by 0.05 because I have them summed. That shows the, the, the right side, the B side, is low, medium, and high over there, three, uh, four, five, and six. Okay, so I'm going to go back to A. And, uh, and, and so we have that, the, the gain parameter right here if we want to um, cut or boost gain on the input. And then we're going to go, here is another delay thing with the, um, this is a time delay, a distance uh, for, the, um, for the input. I'm not going to, I'm going to keep that off. Um, here is EQ, okay, so equalizer. This allows you to add frequencies or cut frequencies if you want to shape the sound, okay? Um, and then B BP band passes in the middle uh, when you have a high and a low, and then band passes what's in between. I'm not going to mess with it. You just keep it off, man. Don't, don't, don't. If you have real problems, you can you can start messing with the EQ on a piece like this. But myself, I'm not going to even go there. There's no way I want this thing doing EQing on my rig. You know, um, you can iron little things out. But if I was going to go, uh and do DSP. I would do it. I would do it in a different different manner. But anyways, so I'm going to skip EQ. We're not going to do any of that. We're going to go to the next page. Dynamic EQ. This is something else. No, keep it off. And we go. Now we're at another dynamic EQ with the threshold. No, off. I'm just going to keep going. Now we're back at the at the main page. Okay, so we know we've been through all those. So that we just ran through all our choices for the inputs. Okay. And we didn't need to add, basically all you're going to use it for in hi-fi is to cut or, or boost gain. And really, the only reason you need to do it on the input is if your DAC is powering this thing and it's, the DAC is really hot, it's giving it tons of juice, maybe it's overdriving the input of this thing, you want to turn it down a little bit, you can cut the gain, you know. If the DAC is really weak and it's not sending a, a big signal, then maybe you can put a little gain on the front end 
and, and boost that input signal to give it more oomph through the rest of the, of the machine, okay? And so, so the next thing we'll do is we'll go over to, to the outputs and we're gonna start right here, okay? And that is the left low, okay? And it's gonna remember, it's gonna do both lows at the same time. Now this is, I had this turned off for, uh, cause I was not using subs with my panels, but I'm gonna turn that back on right now. So you can see it shows, see how that, that little left thing goes down? That's the left side or the low pass of the, of the curve. And then this one, that little one that goes this way, that's the high pass of the curve, okay? So this represents, see how there's a number one there? That represents channel one, you know, over on my six over there, that is the left low. So this number one shows me, here's the low, you know, or the, the, the woofer part of the speaker. It's right here inside that curve. It's showing that the bottom is open. So this is gonna go all the way down to 20, as low as this, whatever, as low as it's getting, it's not, it, it's off. So it's not protecting it, it's not, it's, it's just, you're gonna go, it's gonna go all the way open, you know, as, as low as the signal is. Now I'm gonna turn it back on. Um, let's see, right here, oh no. Um, yeah, I'm gonna turn it on, um, and, and you do that by turning the dial in the middle. Okay, and I don't have to move the camera, but okay, so by moving the dial, you'll see I'm going to I'm going to start to scroll up through the different slopes this and and the types of crossover this is a butterworth 6 it's a certain uh, curve and a certain fall off and a certain parameters now we've got a butterworth 12 now we've got a bessel 12 now we've got a linkwitz riley 12 um butterworth 18 butterworth 24 you know bessel 24 Butterworth 48, and you can see how it gets, see how steep it's, I was telling you it gets steeper and steeper. As we go up in the numbers, it's getting steeper and steeper. Now watch this curve. When I turn it down, it gets more gradual, right? More gradual, gradual. But you see, you can see the knee pop up a little bit there. They call that the knee right there. It'll pop because of the different curves. Look at that. You get much more knee out of a Butterworth 18, you know, than, um, let's see, than a, than a 24. Well, those are both Butterworths. See the Bessel between the Butterworth and the Bessel. Oops, um, yeah, where are we? Butterworth and Bessel, 24. These are the same slope, but look, one has much greater knee. Butterworth, 24, and Bessel, 24. So anyways, Linkwitz Riley is the one you just want to Don't mess with the other. Don't mess with the other ones. I mean, you can really get sometimes a, a little better of a tune, but look, Linkwitz Rileys, they always sum together perfectly. They don't have, and, and, and they, um, it's just, it's the most common one that anybody's going to use that's making speakers. So stick with the Linkwitz Riley, and you'll have the least amount of weirdness, okay? If you want to go off and do a tangent and get all weird in the vessels and really go in there and, and, and tweak something, you can have some fun. You can get some really killer um, tunes, um, but it's easiest if, you're, if, you, if you don't have a ton of experience, stick with the LR, okay? So, and, and stick with, um, where are we? LR12 is most usual, LR12 and LR24, um, I'm going to stick with the LR24. I like a more steep slope. So you can see now 63 hertz is right where this starts to, 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 to stop. So it's going to go, it, the speaker will actually go below 63 hertz, but this is where it starts its 24 decibel per octave decrease, okay, going down that slope. And then on the other side, you see this other part of the curve. We've got a Linkwitz Riley 24 as well, and the frequency is 1.82K. So that means um, that's where my mid range is. My mid range comes in at, at and and but this is a cut off of the woofer. So the the cut off for the woofer starts at 1.82 k and it, and it goes down pretty quick. That's how that's how the woofer cuts off. Now when we go to I'm going to go back over to my the six over here and I'm going to hit left mid. Now I come over back and it says and you can see right there it says left mid. Now I'm at that two. You can see I just got a little lump right there. I'm just basically the mid range is just supporting this crossover point. Basically, it's it's but it, it is it, it it really helps having it in there. This is a custom speaker, so um, it, they normally come two way, but I, this is the three way that I made it that way. So look, so that um, as, as you remember on on the other side, we were closing off the woofer at 1.82 kilohertz. Now we are opening up the mid at the same place. We're opening the mid at 1.82K at a Linkwitz uh, Riley 24. So that's up here, this one, this, this little, the first part of this, of this the, the, the down curve, right? We're picking up and crossing at 1.82. On the other end, 
we are going up in this also <clears throat> Link with Riley 24 to 2.85k. <clears throat> That's where the that this is the cutoff again as you can see the roll off point of the mid range. So the ro the mid range is going to go up to 2.85k and then it's going to start rolling off at a 24 dB per slope per octave and and roll off, okay? And then um we're going to I'm going to go back over to the 6 here like this. Okay, and I'm going to go and I'm going to hit the the highs. So one, two, three, one, two, three, low, mid, high, low, mid, high. Now I just hit l left high, okay? And so now we're back here and I'm on I'm on left high. Now left high is this one. It goes like that. Boop, okay. And um it shows right here that on the on the low side I'm picking up at 2.62k. And um and then I am um, well, I should, yeah, it's off, okay. I'm not closing off. So in other words, I'm not trying to limit how high it goes. That tweeter over there, that ribbon, will 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 just roll off on its own. I don't need to cut it off. So I leave it completely open on the top, and it's and, and it only goes to 20K for this measurement part of this stack, or I mean of this uh, uh, crossover. So so that shows you there. So that's how you control the um, the each different slope, each different arch, of the so of the woofers and the mid range and of the tweeter and that's how this whole thing works and um, so we have this page now we've got all our points now we can go and we'll, we'll switch through again this is EQ we keep that off dynamic EQ we keep that off we keep this thing off we keep that thing off polarity normal you can switch your polarity right here if you want to some preamps invert polarity sometimes it gives you a more solid feel you can go from zero to one eighty but you have all this other parameters um uh this is again this is the delay for uh group delay um i'm gonna leave that off and then now here we are back at the first page for the um the left high and it shows us and, and this again it will control both of the left and the right high because i have them summed and uh and it shows that there's their positive 3.1 db so i'm boosting the input um um on, on A and then the output gain on there on the three, which is the high, number three. I'm get, I got 3.1 dB of gain for the highs. I'm boosting the highs a little bit. They needed it, and um, and so that's that. Now I'm completely done with this, and I can play. You put the you hook up to the back. That's all you got to do with these things. I just showed you in a quick couple minutes how to set your crossover for hi-fi. You don't need to worry about any of the other crap. It's really pretty simple. Um, all this other store and set up and like, you know, compare and stuff. It's just, I don't even use them. You know, all, all you'll be using for hi-fi is the page buttons, the parameter buttons. The page buttons move the whole pages. The parameter buttons go through your different choices on that page. The knob changes your, your um, value of those, of those different choices. And then you've got, um, Mute, just mute stuff, right? Store is to store a, a, um, a preset. Recall is to recall the preset. Um, sum, you know, is to sum the channels together. Setup helps you do setup. We did that. Compare, I have no idea. And that's all there is to it. So that's it, man. That's in a nutshell. That is how you cross over your speakers. And in and this is how to operate the um, Behringer uh, Ultra Drive 2496. So um, there you have it, and um, it's simple, and it makes a big difference. But remember, if you're going to do this, you have to have a way of eliminating the crossover at the speaker. So my panels that are here, these uh, the big black panels, they come with an outboard crossover. So perfect. I don't need to do anything. I just take that outboard crossover, get it out of there, and then I just plug straight into where the other side of the output crossover or the outboard crossover would would send speaker cables up to three binding posts low mid and high i just remove that the outboard crossover and then i just hook my amps up to directly up to those drivers and then this this sends them the signal and and it's perfect so you can perfectly triamp or biamp with a speaker that has an outboard crossover where you can see the wires going up to binding posts uh, you, it, it'll be instantaneous for you to do it that way. If you're trying to do it with one of these, you're going to have to go inside and, and disconnect to do it right. You're going to have to disconnect the crossover and then add another binding post, unless they already have three. 
you'd need three for this, low, mid, and high. Um, you can sometimes work around them, but it's it's it, it can be problematic. And you need to know what you're doing. You need to cross it over and work it like right within the parameters of these where you're not in the same areas. Um, and I just don't recommend it. I mean, you can try. It doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt anything. You know, it just it just might sound weird. So um, anyways, that's that. And I thought I'd give you a quick tutorial. And that's it. See you.